In today's episode of the Simulator Series, we are going to be scripting the point system, which is going to affect the currency GUI that you're seeing on the left-hand side of the screen, as well as the leader stats on the top right. As always, I have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's get into it. So, hopping directly into Studio, the first thing we'll do is start scripting the point system on the client. Now, considering our game is going to be based off of the clicking simulator game, the primary action for obtaining points in our game is just going to simply be to click on the screen. So we'll go into the starter player and into the starter player scripts. And inside of here, we're going to add a brand new local script. We'll rename this from local script to click. Then inside of here, we're going to create a variable for the user input service. And we're going to get that service. Now the user input service is pretty straightforward. It handles almost everything that has to do with the actual player's input. So using the service, we're going to listen to the input began event. And we're going to connect that to an anonymous function, which is going to accept the input and processed. So first of all, the input is actually an input object, which we could see up here. And we can use that to basically identify what button a player pressed, for example, and process will basically tell us if Roblox has already used this input for some reason. So for instance, if a player clicks on a button, this event will still fire, but process will return true because the player has clicked on the button and Roblox has already sort of used that click already. So what we're going to say is if processed, then return end because we don't want to do anything if Roblox has already used this input because it most likely has something to do with the GUI or other things related to that. So if the input hasn't been processed, then we want to start working with the input. So we want to check if the input dot user input type, and now we want to check if that's equal to something so we can see if a player has pressed the mouse button. So we're going to say enum dot user input type dot mouse button one. So now we're checking if the input the player has passed through to us is a mouse button, meaning if their player has pressed the left mouse button, then this would be true. Now we also want to consider that not every single player in our game is going to be on PC. So we also want to make this compatible for console and mobile as well, which is really easy. Inside of our if statement, we're going to say or, and then we're going to copy this right here and paste it. So we're going to say, or if the user input type is equal to enum.userInputType.touch, and now touch refers to the mobile version of what a click would be. So anytime a player touches their screen, then they would also earn a point. Then finally, to make this compatible with console, we also have to say another or, and this time instead of saying user input type, we actually have to check the key code, and then we're going to say enum.keycode. And now the right trigger on a controller is actually button R2. So that is the right trigger on a controller, and then we just have to say end, and there we go. We now have our if statement, which is compatible with PC, mobile, and console. So now that we have this set up, we actually have to communicate with the server to tell the server, hey, we want the player to earn a point because they just clicked. So what are we going to do? Well, we have to go inside of replicated storage, create a new folder, and we're going to rename this to remotes. And then inside of here, we're going to add a new remote event, which is going to be called click. Then at the top of our script, let's go ahead and get the replicated storage just like that. And then let's create a variable for the remotes folder. So replicated storage dot remote, just like that. And now we'll use the remotes folder. So we'll say remotes dot and then in index that with click and now we have our click remote and then we're going to say fire server and that's all that we have to do so now anytime we click in our game we'll fire the click remote event and tell the server hey we want to get a point so now let's go into the server script service and create a new script we'll rename this to click and of course we're going to need the replicated storage and then we're going to want to create a variable for the remotes folder just like we did previously and there we go now that we've got the remotes folder we're going to say remotes dot click dot on server event and now we have to connect that to a function so let's go ahead and create a new function up here local function click that'll accept the player which is of course going to be a player and then we will connect this remote event to that function right there perfect so anytime this function is called we pretty much want to always give the player a reward so what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of our player data and inside of our manager module script and we're actually going to add a method to this because we want to make handling our player data a lot more centralized so all inside of one script and it also makes it easier for us to do this from other scripts as well so we're going to create a new function and it's going to be called adjust clicks and what it's going to accept is a a player which is of course going to be a player and then the amount which is going to be a number now inside of this function we're going to need to get that player's profile so we're going to say local profile equals manager dot profiles and index that with the player now if there is no profile then all we're going to do is return n because we don't want the script to continue but if there is a profile then what we're going to do is we're going to say profile dot data dot clicks and then we're going to adjust the player's clicks so we're going to say plus equals amount so then we can go back inside of the click script we then need to get the server script service and then we're going to create a variable for the player data manager so we're going to say local player data equals require server script service dot player data dot manager and now with that inside of this click function what we can do is we can say player data 
dot adjust clicks and now all we have to do is pass through the player and the amount of clicks that we want to reward to the player so we can just say one for example now going back to the manager script right here is where we adjust the player's profile data additionally we need to adjust the player's leader stats as well so we're going to say player dot leader stats dot clicks dot value equals and then we're going to set that equal to the profile dot data dot clicks just like that so now that we have all this set up we can actually go ahead and start testing our game to verify that this all works so hopping directly into our game anytime we actually click on the screen we can see our leader stats is increasing at the top right hand corner so that is working perfectly now one thing that we want to consider is we most likely want to add a cooldown to how many times a player should be able to click per second so what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable up here called click underscore cooldown all in caps and we're going to set this to 0.5 or 0.5 so it's easier to read and we're going to use this cooldown and implement it into our click function to allow the player to only click every 0.5 seconds which would be the equivalent of clicking two times every second now to implement this cooldown we actually have to create another table so local cooldown and we're going to set that equal to a blank table then what we're going to do is inside of this click function we're going to say if table dot find and then we're going to need to pass through the table which is going to be cooldown and then what we want to look for is the player so if the cooldown table contains the player then what we want to do is just return n so we want to stop the function right there if the player is able to be found inside of the cooldown table otherwise what we're going to do is we're actually going to insert the player into the cooldown table just like that then we're going to use task.delay and now the amount of seconds that we want to delay so we're going to say click cooldown and now we'll create an anonymous function inside of here then we want to look for the player inside of the table so we're going to say local found player equals table dot find look through the cooldown table and look for the player and now if found player then we then want to remove them from that table so table dot remove cooldown because we want to remove it from the cooldown table and we want to remove found player from the cooldown table and now we have a cooldown set up on this function so just to recap on how this works whenever this function is called first of all we're going to try to see if the player exists inside of this cooldown table if they don't then we're going to add the player to this cooldown table and then we're going to use task.delay to schedule a task to run 0.5 seconds later but before that happens we're going to adjust the player's clicks by plus one for right now and then once that delay is over, we're going to try to find the player inside of that table, and then we're going to remove them from that table if they are found within that table. So we're adding and then removing the cooldown from the player, which is really simple. Now that we have that all set up and it's all working good, what we now need to do is we need to actually begin replicating the player's data to the client. What I mean by that is inside of our game, we're able to see that the leader stats was actually updating with the amount of clicks that the player has, but the currency GUI on the left-hand side of the screen right here was not. That's why we're going to start replicating the data to the client so that we can begin updating the currency label so we're going to go back inside of the player data manager right here but we need to create another remote event and this remote event is going to be called update clicks and then of course we need to get that remote inside of here so we're going to get the replicate storage and then we'll create a variable for the remotes folder so now that we have that inside of the adjust clicks function once we adjust all the players clicks we're going to say remotes dot update clicks fire client we'll pass through the player and then we'll pass through the profile dot data dot clicks so we'll then tell the player the amount of clicks that they have and now that we've done that we have to then listen to this remote event to be fired on the client somewhere so we're then going to go into the starter gui inside of the currency gui and we're going to add a brand new local script to this we're just going to rename this to manager the script name doesn't really matter now inside of here we are of course going to need the replicated storage and the remotes folder so we're going to go ahead and create both of those variables additionally we're going to need to start creating some variables for this gui itself so we're going to say local GUI equals script dot parent. Then we'll create one for the frame. Then we'll create one for the frame. So frame equals GUI dot frame. Then inside of the frame, we have the clicks and the gems frame. So we're going to say local clicks equals frame dot clicks. Local gems equals frame dot gems. And now realistically for these variables, we could actually change them up a little bit. So for clicks, realistically, what we need is amount. We need this specific text label right here. So we can say clicks dot amount. And that's referring to that text label. And for the gems, is the exact same thing. So now we have both of the amount labels for them. We're also going to want to create a variable for the buy button and then also the CPS, which stands for clicks per sec. So we'll say local buy clicks equals frame dot clicks dot buy. And then we'll say local clicks per sec equals frame dot clicks dot CPS, just like that. So we have all of our variables. Let's start listening for the remote event to be fired. So we'll say remotes dot update clicks dot on client event connect and then we're going to create a function for this which is going to accept amount which is of course going to be a number then we'll create a function which is going to be called update currency and that's going to accept a currency which is either going to be clicks or it's going to be gems and the second argument of this is going to be amount which is going to be a number now the way this function is going to work is we're going to check if the currency equals clicks and if it does then we need to update the clicks label so we'll say clicks dot text equals amount and then else if currency equals gems 
then gems.txt equals amount. There we go. Then whenever the update clicks remote event is fired on the client, we can call the update currency function, pass through clicks, and then we're going to pass through the amount as well. There we go. So let's go ahead and test this out by going into our game and seeing if this all works correctly. So let's go ahead and click. And now we see whenever we click, we have the leader sets up here updated, and we also have this label updated as well. So every single time we click, we can see that there is a cooldown being applied, and we can see that our clicks are increasing both on the label and on the leader stats as well. So this is working perfectly. Another thing we need to consider is updating this label when the player first joins the game. Because we saw when the player first joined the game, the label still displayed 100.00 million, but the player clearly did not have that amount. There are quite a few ways that we could handle this, but what we're going to do is we're going to go inside the remote folder and we're going to create a remote function, and that's going to be called get data. Then what we can do is back inside of the manager script, we'll say update currency, and we'll say clicks, and then we'll say remote.getData, invoke server, and now what we're going to pass to this remote is going to be clicks. So now back on the server, we're going to go inside of the manager script, and then we're going to create a new function. This could actually be a local function get data, which will accept the player and the directory, which is going to be a string. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get the player profile. So exactly what we did up here, if there is no profile, then we're just going to return nothing and end. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we are going to return the profile dot data and index this with the directory. So for instance, if we're calling this function and we pass through clicks as the directory, this is going to say profile dot data dot clicks and we'll get that value passed back to us. Or another example could be if we go inside of the template, we could even say gems and then that would tell us how many gems that we have. So now that we have that function, we now can implement the remote. So we'll say remotes dot get data dot on server invoke equals and set that to the get data function. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start up our game and see if this all works. So we see as soon as we load into our game, the label is up updated instantly with 181, which also matches our leader stats as well. And then of course, every time we click, we can see both the leader stats and labels updating, which means that this is working perfectly. To make our numbers appear nice, as you can see on the text label right there. To get this module, just go down below in the description and you'll be taken to this page on the developer forum right here. Once you're here, you're going to click on the format number, which is this download link right here, and then save that file to wherever you want. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the replicated storage and add a brand new folder to this, which is going to be called libs, similar to how you have one in the server script service. Then we will go ahead and right click this folder and click insert from file. Then find the format number module that you saved and click on open. That'll insert the folder directly inside of the libs and that's all good to go. Now inside of the format number folder, we have this module script called simple. Let's go ahead and open that up. And inside of here, we can see that we have a table called compact suffix and we have to adjust this slightly. As we can see right here, there is a comment and all we have to do is delete this entire part. So the comment part e dot g dot and then that space right there. And now inside of this table, we have K, M, B, and T, which are all strings. Now these represent the suffixes, which will be displayed alongside the number once it becomes formatted. So for instance, if a player has 10,000 coins, it'll say 10 and then a capital K. If you wanted it, it could be a lower K and you could do that, or you could say uppercase K, or if you wanted to, you could say thousand, which I don't think a lot of people will do, but I'm just showcasing examples of what you guys can do when you're modifying the compact suffix table. Anyways, we're not going to adjust this table any further. We just need to make sure that it had these values inside of it. Now that we've done that, we're good with that module, we don't actually need to modify anything inside of it. We just have to begin using it. And the way that we're going to use it is by creating a variable for it. So above the remote variable, we're going to say local format number equals require replicate storage dot libs dot format number. And now we have the format number folder. We want to make sure that we say dot simple because we're going to use the simple, which is easy to use number formatter. Now that we have that, we can use format number to format the number inside of this function. So inside of our update currency function, we're going to say amount equals format number dot format compact and then pass through the amount. The format compact function takes a number as an argument and then will return to us that specific number formatted the way that we want it as a string. So then we'll use that string whenever we set the text of either of the two labels and now that is all looking good. So then we can go ahead and just adjust the clicks to say like 100 and test this out in game to verify it all works. So going into the game, once we reach 1000 coins, we can now see 1.6k, 1.7k, 1.9k and so on, which means that this is working perfectly. So now we have a working point system, which is also able to replicate from the server directly back down to the client. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this episode. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. As always, if you did, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox about my content. Additionally, I have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.